ओम शांति ट्वेंटी एट मार्च टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन थर्सडे टूडे इज ब्लेसिंग मे यू बी अ सेल्फ सॉवरिंग विद द अवेयरनेस ऑफ बींग अ चाइल्ड एंड अ मास्टर एंड मेक ऑल द ट्रेजर्स यूर्स मे यू बी अ सेल्फ सॉवरिंग विद द अवेयरनेस ऑफ बींग अ चाइल्ड एंड अ मास्टर and make all the treasures yours at this time you children are not just children but you are the children who are the masters one is a master who is a self sovereign and another is a master of the father's inheritance since you are self sovereigns you have all your physical senses under your control under your order however from time to time you forget the awareness of being a master and your mind takes control and this is why the father's mantra is man mana bhav when you remain man mana bhav you will not be influenced by anything wasteful and you will experience all treasures to belong to you So by saying, we are children as well as we are masters. Master of because we are self-sovereign, and second, we are the master of father's inheritance. But by by saying, you forget. this awareness of being a master and that is why the mantra given by the father is man mana bha because the mind takes control that is why when you are in mantra man mana bha man mana bha you will not be influenced by anything wasteful and you will experience all treasures to belong to you so this is a unique teaching by the father where baba is saying we are not just children but at the same time we are masters and the greatest mastery in the world is self mastery the most powerful person in the world is the one who is the master of himself that is known as self sovereignty or you call it self mastery whatever the person is described in gita as sthita pragya yogi sthita pragya yogi means who is in con- complete control of himself a yogi who is unaffected by anything outside a yogi who remains uninfluenced a yogi who is determined who maintains the equitable position of the mind the calm and composure of the mind in the face of all the adverse situations so the goal of this life this is one of the goals self mastery how to become self sovereign and what does it mean to become self master what does it mean to become a self master a person who is in complete control of himself in that many things would come some it will be mind intellect and sanskar and before that senses so there are five senses sight what you see smell what you smell taste what you listen what you hear 
and touch. Rupa, Sparsha, Shabda, Gandh. That's what they call in Hindi. So, self master means who controls all these five senses. First, eyes. Yesterday's Murli, Baba said something about eyes. What was that? They are very deceptive. Just don't ask how much deceptive they are. They are very, very deceptive. And what deceives the eyes? Hmm? It is the color that deceives the eyes. It is the form that deceives the eyes. Person's beauty or picture or video or statues or evils, waste, negative. This is what I see. There are two things eyes do. First is watching and second is reading. So there occurs deception at these two levels. Watching those things which are forbidden. Reading those things which one should not. These are the two ways, two channels through which the Maya enters. This is the first thing, eyes or seeing. Self-mastery, self-sovereign means you control your eyes. And then seeing others' weakness in watching so many things are there. Watching all the body conscious things. That is first thing. Watching waste, watching negativity, seeing weaknesses or getting attracted by the pomp of Maya outside world or the delicacies or the food anything this all enter through the eyes this is watching or seeing so you know some of the uh, groups of spiritualist they say that you should not look these eyes are very very uh, Nimble, chanchal, they keep on going from here to here, here to here. That's why there are a group of people who say that even Mahatma Buddha had said to his all his disciple while walking, just look down, don't look here and there. That is known as downcast eyes. And there's a great secret behind that. Because wherever our eyes go or vision goes, energy flows. Wherever our vision goes, energy flows. Suppose I have to go from here to the gate of Pandavavan and there are all the attractive, all the body conscious, all the vicious pictures and posters around and I walk from that place even though I have no desire to look at that those things but the moment I see my energy flows through the eyes that's why they say that it is best that you walk with eyes downcast no need to let the eyes roam here and there. And the greatest example is of Mama. When Nirvair Bhai was... Huh? Yeah, down cost. When Nirvair Bhai was taking Mama and Ramesh Bhai was sitting and they saw some animation, some picture on the street and when they came back, they told Mama that if he can make such a picture, Mama says, I have not seen. I don't know. So control of eyes is must. What the eyes see. Because all the false 
in spirituality have occurred because of the spiritual deception. You know there is one word, spiritual blind spots. This is one of the spiritual blind spot. This is one of the spiritual deception. Eyes deceive, they hoodwink. So, control the eyes, no need to let the eyes roam here and there. This is also practice actually. You know there are some group of sannyasis, what they practice? They tie the blindfold and this is an experiment. They try a blindfold in their room, when they are in the room and when they know it is safe and they try to remain with that after 8 o'clock and they see what happens. Just trying to hold things if whatever is there they will try to search with blindfold. This is also a practice for eyes. Though Baba doesn't mention all this but definitely our eyes are very very Mm. they have a tendency to wander here and there to see every object to see everything what is happening if there is a mobile ring who is it? if somebody is making some noise who is it? we want to see everything so eyes they deceive like anything so control of eyes then second is Smell this is a most benign senses smell. Mm. Yes, but then uh, to make weird faces on getting fetid or bad odor, that is also a sign of body consciousness. It's a very bad smell, and somebody is making like this, like this, and all that. So that means the uh, nose is not under control. Uh, so you control it, <laughs> whatever it is. Yeah, yeah whatever. Uh, you know, in the hospital you will have all the bad smell. But doctors and staff, they do tolerate. There are patients in the ICU for one, one month. There only. They're bad. I'm talking of that. So, to get too much affected or to remain too sensitive, that's another thing, one is allergic. But this is also a part of the mind. It's a training of the mind. That we don't get affected by any bad odor or even fragrant odor. Whatever. Even if it is fragrance, start praising it. Oh, it's too good, it's too good, it's too good. And if it is in bad odor, start abusing it. Oh, what? Who is this? It's a very bad odor. So, that is also not a sign of self-mastery. Then taste, that is most important thing. Yogi means who has conquered the taste. Yogi lives for, eats for living. He doesn't eat, he doesn't live for eating, but he lives, he eats for living. Our food should be homeopathic, in homeopathic doses. Our food should be subtle. Baba has mentioned in many times in Murli's deities they eat very subtle food. Sukshma. So yogi's food cannot be like bhogi's food. An indulgent person and self-restrained person. Yogi and bhogi. They cannot eat the same food. I am not talking of who is preparing it and how Satopradhan and all those things. It's I am talking about the quality, whether it is sattvic, rajasic or tamasic. It's too much sour, it's too much chilly, it's too much spicy, too much cooked, overcooked, too much oily, too much salty. This is not yogi's food. Yogi's food has to be simple, spiceless, if possible, uncooked, if possible, in small in quantity. So, 
food then next is listening what do we hear control over that it's not that you keep on listening to every and each and every news of the world our mind will become a garbage box if we keep on pouring everything into it so one should be very selective we need not to listen to each and every gossip that is making the rounds there is no point in listening to everything for example there is a psychiatrist who is a very senior psychiatrist once a new assistant joins him a student who is also a psychiatrist but a student and he sees that his master listens to one patient for half an hour so he is asking you are a psychiatrist from last 240 years and you listen to every patient's all this same complaints again and again again and again so the master says i just uh, he, the patient just speak i just hear who listens i don't listen i just hear hearing and listening is different if you keep on pouring everything into the mind the mind will become dustbin and there is so many news in the world so one has to have a very selective listening what is useful to me i have no business in interfering in what others are doing what others are saying there is already so much internal chatter going on and to put all the rubbish into that is not the call of the time so listening and then touch what i touch and what i do not i know that touch upon happiness is conducive to pain so i also understand that that any happiness which arises out of touch ultimately will turn into sorrow that is given in bhagavad gita that any happiness which arises out of touch ultimately will become unhappiness initially it will be nectar later on it will become poison so restrained of all the five senses so this is to become swarajya adhikari this is to become self master this is to become self control controller this is to have self mastery so master your senses and then master your mind master your intellect and master your sanskars which is most difficult out of all this senses mind intellect sanskars mind and second second and <laughs> all five four are difficult but if you go uh, first sense control anybody can do it's easy mind control is difficult but can be done even more difficult is intellect control and the most difficult is sanskar because they are automatic because they are habits they have become deep rooted they operate on their own you don't have to do anything it has become habit you can form any habit mind okay you you have a thought pattern you can change you can think let me have new thought but even if you think let me have new sanskar it is not a one day game long extended period is necessary it's just like what we have to do everything for trans sanskar transformation what an alcoholic does to for the addiction an alcoholic who is addicted to alcohol from last 40 years every 2 3 months is okay you know in mount abu there are so many alcoholics <laughs> they keep on coming to us so 2 3 months they are okay and then they drink suddenly whenever there is a sorrow any loneliness they go and drink again there is a fight so there are triggers so in the similar manner we know that this is a good not a good sanskar and i get rid of this sanskar for 6 months after 6 months that sanskar suddenly arises and i am just defeated so that's why sanskar control is the most difficult thing because it has got its roots in the subconscious mind and it 
it it takes time it is not suddenly so baba is saying self sovereign means you are child and you are master two things child everybody is everybody is a child of god second is mastery means mastery of all the things the strongest man in the world is the one who has mastered himself it is not the victory over others or conquering others it is about mastering oneself senses mind intellect sanskars so how to master sanskars how to master sanskars or control sanskars hmm small changes every day small changes every day bit by bit little by little 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 and how to change how to do sanskar transformation you have to create emerge new sanskars emerge sanskars of golden age emerge sanskars of supreme abode so emerging sans old eternal and original sanskars then what to do with old okay uh, see the see the disadvantages of old sanskars see the harms that is done to me because of this sanskar then what else sanskar yeah replacement okay it's not mine it's somebody else's it's not mine so that is also one way baba has told it is ravan's property it's not mine <laughs> but you deny it then what else try to understand that sanskar you cannot get rid of any sanskar just by suppression as i said an alcoholic or a smoker he is addicted to smoking from last 40 years and suddenly somebody comes oh give up this smoking and he says okay i have given up given up it's not that easy there is one thing which is known as halt these are the triggers for any sanskar alcoholic he has given up alcohol the moment he is hurt the sanskar will emerge or hungry he feels lonely and the sanskar will emerge lonely sanskar will emerge tired he will feel again the sanskar will emerge there is one more from a i don't remember what is it but that is known as halt no these are the points where sanskars are triggered as i said an alcoholic who has given up alcohol suddenly failure happens there is a business loss he goes back to alcohol there is a hurt somebody has hurt him he goes back there is a depression he goes back to alcohol these are the triggers he is ill he is sick he goes back to alcohol <laughs> these are negative triggers yeah. so one has to understand sanskars and also understand the triggers of sanskars this is more important example lust it's not about that i have conquered lust and all that it's not like that it's about knowing the triggers there must be some triggers some visual triggers some auditory trigger some tactile trigger or some psychological trigger some imagination has gone sensual fantasy that will trigger lust otherwise lust doesn't come person must have seen something read something remembered the past indulgent behavior then only the lust would be triggered otherwise not so one must identify triggers philips stimuli for any sanskar this is very important
So understand sanskar, identify the triggers, deny them, face them, reject them, what else? And replace, emerge previous sanskars. And most important thing for sanskar transformation is powerful yoga without bodiless stage without practice of bodiless stage no sanskar transformation happens deep churning of knowledge is necessary for sanskar transformation every day deep churning of knowledge why this is coming to me again and again for example somebody has a habit of crying or sensitive nature or getting angry so one has to contemplate on that sanskar what are the triggers what make me cry what make me upset throughout the day what makes me angry throughout the day what are the triggers is it the person somebody comes and does something and I become angry what is it so identifying triggers is must so we are two children and we are masters so master means mastering senses mastering mind mastering intellect mastering sanskars most difficult as I said is mastering sanskar understand the sanskars and rather than using the word sanskar replace it by another word habit habit is a more light and better word sanskar means it's you find it is like a big mountain <laughs> habit means okay I want to change this habit it's little better word so I want to change this habit of crying getting upset hmm? It's a better word. It's like everybody uses it. Sanskar means it's a monster, big monster. Sanskar. I, how to fight with it? So use the word. Better word is habit. I want to change the habit. I want to change my habit of Amritvela habits, Murli habits, kitchen habits, bathroom habits, <laughs> drinking habits eating habits, everything. This is a, Brahmin life is a habits. Eating habits, talking habits, working habits, sleeping habits, waking up habits, churning habits, speaking habits, yoga habits, dharna habits, seva habits. So I want to work on the habits. Hmm? Drinking habits is Om Shanti. <laughs>